Mr. Kemp, this will be your second time around, and uh, that will end the debate uh, back and forth. You have the floor. Thank you. We went through quite a process of establishing our priorities, and when we did that, all day kindergarten was the most important priority that we all agreed to when it came to addressing student needs. And in fact, I don't remember that the math interventionists were that high up on the list uh, of where they were. I also find that asking the audience the other evening was an opportunity for those who happened to be here who were advocating the math uh, interventionist uh, idea. Uh, if, if the full staff had been aware that that kind of question would have been asked, you might have seen more staff members present saying, I would like to have had the following. And that, on that particular evening, there was someone from staff in the, in the, in the room that's, that spoke up in, in favor of math interventionists. So I don't know that it was necessarily fair to the entire staff to, to ask that question spontaneously like that. But I go back to the fact that we prioritized all day kindergarten. That's what we're, we're trying to get done here. And it's 7.1 where, where I just don't, I don't see it happening. Ms. Bush. Although I see the benefit in math interventionists, um, I really feel that the administration would have made that a higher priority when they were making their budgets. So that might have been an afterthought or something that they felt was important, but not important enough to reflect it in their current budget. I think that we have the numeracy coaches that will provide instruction for the teachers to provide instruction and some individualized instruction for students to provide them with a little extra coaching for some of these kids. Um, my, my goal is to make sure that the youngest of our students are getting everything they need. And I think it is a goal of the board as well. And I think that that needs to be our focus. If the administrators wanted math coaches in there, they would have put it in there. And that's how I feel about that, so. Any further dismiss Goldich? No, thank you. Any other discussion? I just want to ask for clarification in that discussion. Clarification on? On what shows up in the budget? Because, because it wasn't in Dr. Conway's proposed budget, it doesn't mean that it wasn't asked for by administrators. Is that perhaps not in this particular case, but they make, my understanding is they submit their budget and then Dr. Conway guides them through or makes choices about what will be included in her proposed budget. So simply because it's not in here doesn't mean that it might not have been considered or asked for. It's probably, it's probably a fair statement. Uh, we told uh, administration where we wanted to focus this year, or what, what our interest was when we had our budget deliberation, uh, pre-budget deliberation, I should say. And we guided them towards all day K and extended opportunities, which may not have left funding for other opportunities. Dr. Conway, would you wish to weigh yes. Um, this budget reflects 100% of the requests of every administrator in this district. Math interventionists were not requested in this budget, additional people. They were requested in the Alliance grant, and those were things we had to um, weigh was where we needed to put our, uh, our funding there, but they were not requested. We have a motion. We have a second. Um, are any other new... Thank you. I'm going to call this motion to a vote by a show of hands. All in favor of adding 138,000 for a math interventionist representing two FTEs. Uh, show of hands. Aye. Uh, in favor. Yeah. There we go. 
and against. And that motion is going to fail. Mr. Person. I'd like to make a motion to cut $3,000 from account number 56140 paint supplies. In the two years, or two years ago, we did not expend it all, and this year we're only uh, not even 50% expended. The account number given with that? 56140. And that was $3,000 reduction and for paint supplies. Is based, on, based on past practice. Based on past practice. Is there a second on that motion? Ms. Fisher. I have a motion and a second to reduce $3,000 from account 56140. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing now, call to a vote by a show of hands. All in favor? That's unanimous. Ms. Skolich. I have a question. Uh, Center of Administration 53339, other professional and technical services for Board of Ed um, about PD 360. Uh, could I hear from Mrs. Mirasso about that particular program? It's $83,965. I, if we're talking about removing technology from the classrooms or not being able to hire additional help for children in the classroom, <coughs> could I hear that they're the weight of a PD 360 program versus something like technology in the classroom? I just answer in the numbers first, and then Mr. Morasso will speak to that. Um, that includes two things, that line. Uh, only half of it for, is for PD360. The other half of it is for a, um, a an information system that will take care of all of our teacher evaluations for next year. We were informed by the State Department that we needed to plan for that. Is that what web-based educator evaluator management tool is? That's correct. And they're lumped into one amount. What That's is the? Uh, Mrs. Can you split so them out? One is uh, they're both around 40. One's a little higher. One's a little lower. They're both. Um, PD360 is actually $47,000. It's approximately $7,000 per site. Um, I, I would tell you that um, regarding professional development, the research on professional learning is pretty clear. The old model um, where a consultant stands and delivers and participants sit and get is not effective. We've learned from research and best practice that the best professional development happens closest to the classroom. That is why we have um, the model of coaches, numeracy, literacy, and behavior coaches in our classrooms. And we've also learned that teachers need to take responsibility for their own learning. We've also learned that the best professional learning is linked to teacher evaluation. And in fact, our new state model of educator evaluation, SEED, which will be implemented next year, requires just that. For those teaching practices that require professional growth for our staff, we will need to provide resources to support their individual learning needs. PD360 is one of those resources. It is an online, on-demand tool that provides teachers access to thousands of researchers and professionals in the field through video. Additionally, it allows for teachers to join groups on topics of mutual interest and to join colleagues across the nation um, in sharing of best practice. And where we have 46 states implementing common core state standards, that kind of social network is really critical for us to learn from each other. Um, our implementation plan for the use of this tool was very um, planful and methodical this year as we built our infrastructure. Monthly benchmarks for its use have been outlined and monthly reports have been analyzed. And I'm pleased to report that 95% of our staff have met the, have met the benchmark those who are experiencing some technical difficulties, we are working to help them address those issues. A survey to address um, our implementation of PD360 is planned for our April benchmark, and I would hope to solicit from all staff um, both the positives and the negatives on its use. Studies have shown, however, that districts who use PD360 at a certain level have increased their student achievement, so we're very hopeful regarding its implementation. As Dr. Conway noted, also included in that line item, um, the remainder of that, are dollars to support the implementation of the state model educator evaluation system. The state and all of our RESC, our regional education service centers, are working with a number of vendors to design systems that will provide districts in Connecticut with the tools to meet our implementation needs um, that will also save dollars, hopefully through a consortium approach.
but that information is not available to us yet, so we are following the guidance provided by the State Department of Education and budgeting an amount for that purpose. So as they give us more guidelines as to the amount to, to expect to purchase that kind of a system, then we can make adjustments accordingly. But right now, this is our best guess based on state guidance for that tool. So you do feel that the presence of PD360 has a direct effect on student achievement in the district? Yes. And the evaluator, educator evaluation system is required by the state? That's correct. Thank you, Ms. Morrison. Yes, sir. One of the questions he asked was about collaborating with other towns to reduce our costs. Dr. Conway's answer was that they that we do collaborate, a member of our IC and the regional, I mean the regional interdistrict collaborative. My my question was more about Could you please speak into the mic a little bit or think sorry. I'm trouble my here. question was more relative to saving on health insurance costs. Um, think you know, big big ticket items that um, is is there a potential? to save dollars on those kinds of items by collaborating with other towns. And I'll, I'll ask Mr. Carr to answer that. That's all relatively new. I know the state had a, uh, a model that we haven't really looked into yet. Um, but Mr. Carr, do you want to uh, do that? This is all new to do this kind of thing. I know in Northeast Connecticut they have just started trying to do that. Not through you, Mr. Chairman. That is correct. Um, we, are, we are doing quite a bit of collaborating. We've done a lot this past year. Mrs. Arms point. However, uh, the state partnership plan is a new health insurance plan that represents a, a, a new concept for having municipalities participate in a state health insurance plan. To your example, we have requested price quotes for that for our new health insurance. They tend to be, um, so far from what we've seen, much higher than the health savings account plan from the other companies. Uh, so I'm not expecting that to be a viable option. But we will continue to find uh, opportunities to let the advise. Uh, we, we just don't have anything at this point to offer that could offset a budget number, but we will continue to look. Thank you, Mr. McCarl. Other discussion? Ms. Sarn. Well, when I asked about the assistant superintendent's salary included in the budget, and I, your, your answer had to do with step and all, I'm really wondering if when you're, I know it's a negotiable item as well, but is there any validity to reducing what the dollar amount that's in the budget now? I, I, can you suggest a dollar amount like Mr. Mr. Picaro has been doing for some places? Is there a dollar amount that we could reduce that by? Um, in looking at what assistant superintendents make in the area, uh, around the state as well, but in the area, I would not recommend that. We certainly could, and then the board would have to negotiate based on that amount. That's all. It's, it's up to you. School. So I guess the same question would apply to all of the retirements. We seem to have quite a few at the end of this academic year. Are those, is it possible to reduce those salary figures in any way in here? They're already represented in this book as 69, uh, you know, with the benefits. Um, that's the, they're all shown as a Just that open. default figure? Yeah, the default. Thank you. Yeah, anywhere where you see open and a number, those numbers should be the same all the way across and it is a default. 